My name is Kimberly Nace of Westergren, and I am the president of Measure Consumer Perspectives. And um, our company is um, a global mystery shopping and brand auditing provider. So we do traditional mystery shopping. We do uh, brand auditing. We do mobile feedback through customers uh, uh, via mobile. And um, we also use uh, non-traditional media using um, mobile as well as um, uh, new technologies to gather insights within the store using hidden camera and hidden audio equipment. So um, you know, one of the reasons that I'm here today is to really sort of talk about the new voice and image of the customer and the, the data that can be captured and really the experience that can be captured from, from customers um, inside of the retail store, and sp inside of apartments, inside of places where they're patronizing or looking at doing business or when they're observing brands. And um, really, the, the goal is to, 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 to bring about, uh, the reason we use this equipment is to bring about um, sort of proving that perception really is reality. And um, let's see, here we go. You know, we've talked a lot over the past couple days about data and all these data feed inputs. You know, we have mystery shopping, brand auditing, social media, POS systems, panelists, custom research, text analytics. There's all of this information that we get that really sort of le leads to um, you know, it could be analysis paralysis, but what I say is that um, you sometimes you have to put aside some of the analytics and really tell a story about the experience that customers are having inside the store. And, uh, you know, using new technologies, we're able to do that. And, you know, one of the things that I like to say or that I, that I see in our business is that businesses really are sort of divided into silos right now. So they're taking all of this data and you've got marketing with an agenda, you've got ops with an agenda, you've got training with an agenda, and they're all using this technology, and they're all using this information, and they're all pushing it down and analyzing it, and they're sending it to the ground floor. And the customer service person or the employee at the ground level is sort of getting mixed signals about what they're supposed to do, what they're supposed to say to the customer, how they're supposed to present a product to the customer. And so it, it really sort of becomes an issue when you're talking about that person being the frontline person and that information that is drilled down to that ground level person and the qualitative and the quantitative information that we're gathering really does require some operational oversight. And so one of the things that I wanted to uh, get into is um, the president of Office Depot, I I've been telling this story for years when I first started my company 12 years ago. There was a Staples 12 miles from my office and there was an Office Depot 3 miles and I would go repeatedly to the Office Depot and leave every time agitated and grouchy because I couldn't find anybody who could answer a question logically about what was supposed to happen or what I was supposed to buy or why I needed one product versus another. Everybody was just there and they were milling and, and there was nothing. I happened to walk into Staples another time and had a fantastic customer experience. The person answered my question, they got out of my way, and they told me why I needed to buy the software that he presented to me. And, and so from that point on, I kind of had, I was a loyal Staples customer. And about six months ago, I read an article uh, by Kevin Peters, who is the, the CEO of Staples, or a best of, a, of Home Depot, or Office Depot, sorry, and he said, that they were looking at their mystery shopping and they were looking at their customer satisfaction and they just couldn't figure out from all of this data what was going wrong in the stores. And it came down to him putting his feet on the ground and actually walking through the stores and experiencing what the customer experienced. And big data and all of the information that we're getting back and the qualitative and the quantitative and the devices that we're using to gather this data can't always paint that picture of what's happening inside of the store. And so one of the things that, uh, that we're using now um, is hidden camera equipment that looks something like this. It's actually, it's not Google Glass, but it is glasses that are hidden camera. Um, plugs into a DVR. We can, we, we can put it on customers. We can put it on the shoppers. We can put it on the auditors, send them into the store. And we see businesses now using this technology to really get insights into what's happening from the customer service level. And it gives and paints a story about the data that they're already getting. And of course, the customers, on the other hand, and the retail writ large is using these nice new apps called Social Cam and Diddy, which I'm, one of these is gonna be the next Instagram where you can now take a photo. Instead of taking a photo, you can take a video, post it instantly to YouTube, and now you've got something that uh, could keep your, your uh, crisis PR team kind of in uh, business, but if, you, if they've had a negative experience. 
So what I'm going to show you is a series of videos. This first one hopefully will lighten up everything. And um, this is not the actual video of the experience, but it is based on a customer service uh, encounter where the uh, customer went in. They weren't necessarily dressed the nicest, but they were looking to buy a car. And the associate basically told them that they were not really the type of client they wanted. So uh, if you could push play, that would be great. And this is a parody, by the way, of our interpretation of the experience. Well, howdy, ma'am. Welcome to Dipsy James Carlot Heaven. How are you today? I'm good. Nice, nice, nice. And nice. uh, what are you looking for today, ma'am? I'm not so like this. Well, um, don't you think it's a little old for you? You might want something a little younger. No, I, I really like it. Uh, well, what's your price range, ma'am? I hadn't thought about that. How much is it? Well, I think it's a little more than you can afford from the looks of you. So, uh, maybe you should go over to Jimmy Joe's. Uh, Good day, ma'am. So, so that really did happen. And so, no amount of feedback and no amount of analysis can really paint the picture of what that experience is. Now, if, you'll, if we'll have another one here, and this is actually from an experience that happened inside of Apple. And Apple really does certainly gather a ton of data about what's happening in the stores and the traffic and customer service, and they certainly use that to staff their stores and to train. But um, sometimes some pretty damning things can happen when you're uh, when you're uh, on site and when you're looking at some experiences. So go ahead and start this one too. <laughs> I need to get a, a battery for my, for my laptop. Okay. I don't, but I took a picture of my computer so that you would probably be able to tell me which one it was. So in that situation, I'm going in, I'm asking for some help, and the associate nicely walked me to the product, did exactly what they were supposed to do, and then somebody came along and really interrupted the conversation without any sort of apology or any sort of, I'm sorry, let's 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 fix this or let me let me let me help you in another way. Um, so that's a another experience that sort of goes towards explaining what it is that um, that you can capture using the mobile device. That was actually captured on an iPhone. Um, here is another one where we all have our clients that are asking for uh, the feedback from their customers. They all want the receipt survey and their extensively long surveys and they drive us crazy and now more and more everywhere you go, if you'll just fill out this survey for me and let me know if I've done good for you, that would be great. Well, sometimes it just doesn't come across as very pretty whenever you actually uh, hear it told and hear it asked. If you'll start this one. Oh, the back one. Okay. Okay. Here, I always do that just as kind of a reminder so you can register your warranty. Okay. I hate I lose receipts as soon as I walk out of the building. Some that have the same fate as me. Now, can you do me a huge favor? If I was helpful for you today, mm -hmm. could you please take the survey in here? Okay. Um, managers check it daily. Okay. The cool thing is, you could actually win um, five thousand dollar gift card. Okay. It just doesn't sound pretty. <laughs> Doesn't sound good. Um, so essentially, you know, you, you, you again can justify uh, using or leaving behind some of the qualitative and quantitative information that you have and seeing the story that, it, that it's painting. And if, if you've got, uh, you know, sort of moving beyond that into people taking the technology into their own hands, this is an experience where a person was standing in the store for 10 minutes waiting to be helped. And nobody on staff helped him, so he took this video with his iPhone and posted it up on YouTube. And um, this is what happens when your customers use the technology that we're talking about. Start this one. Customer. Uh, 
So you certainly uh, get a nice uh, picture of what that person was experiencing and the frustration that he felt. Using technology again, we, we can go into companies and we hear businesses talk about why are my customers or why are my stores not filling up? Why are, why are people going to other locations? Why do I have vacancies in this particular unit? And this was a client that we worked with where essentially they had, uh, it's a national uh, nursing home client, and they had five, loca five locations in the city and couldn't figure out why one was full and one was halfway empty, and they just couldn't get to the bottom of it. And no amount of data was filling them in and telling them what was going on, and so we found this. So if you'll push play again. I guess I just wanted to find out a little bit more about the services that you all have and, and kind of get a feel for if, if this would be something that, that I need for my mom. Um, we're having some issues with her. Okay. Are you looking for short-term or long-term care? Long-term care. Okay. Um, we do we do provide both short-term and long-term care, mm -hmm. uh, round-the-clock services as far as nursing. Mm -hmm. um, but. At this time, we do not have any long-term care beds available. They had one right down the street. So what does that customer do? They pack up and they go to another brand. So again, you're able to capture insights by listening and watching. This last one I'll show you is um, maybe near and dear to some of our hearts simply because we have children and if we work and our children are little, we have to find places for them, be it daycare, preschools, schools, whatever. And so we make hard, long decisions about where we're going to put our children and do a lot of investigation. And if you happen to be this brand, this national brand uh, that starts with a K, then you definitely want to make sure that this is not happening when somebody comes in for a tour. And this certainly wouldn't be uh, expressed in any of your uh, customer satisfaction or quality quant surveys. So if you'll start this one. And all doors are or ways to get out to the playground. Okay, and so you said the gates aren't kept locked, but if somebody, can somebody get in the back door? Um, these are usually locked. Okay, okay, no. okay. But uh, we've never, the windows, we, we've never had anybody. Okay. Just creepy. Okay. Come. Okay. But they can't get past me. I'm uh, small, but. Uh. So in this situation, back gate open at the daycare, back door open at the daycare and I asked the question, well, if you've got the back gate open, can somebody come in the back door? And as she opens the back door, she says, well, the back door is always locked, except in this instance. And then she says, but then, the, you know, if somebody creepy does come in, they can't get past me. Well, I've just completely <laughs> lost the interest of, of what, you know, of sending my child there. Um, so really, what it comes down to, you know, one of the things is that we see and that everyone here has discussed over the past couple of days and that we know from the data that we're getting for our clients, that all of us are getting, customers patronize companies that provide excellent customer service. And that's what all of our clients, that's what we're all looking for. With all of our clients, with the brands that we have in the stores, you want to be able to make sure that the, the, the customer experience around your brand is very, very positive. And so, you know, one of the things that customers are saying is that they don't believe that they believe that businesses are paying less attention to providing good customer service. It, we know from experience that all of these businesses are spending money right and left on using these new technologies and using old technologies and using old methodologies to, to get insights so that they can provide good brand experiences. And yet 33% of customers would definitely switch brands simply because of a poor customer service experience. And so one of the indicators that we already know is that it's not just the unresponsive customer service representative that leaves a bad taste in our mouth. It's everybody in your company. Everybody in your company is a representative. And if you look at your brand or you look at your, you know, the clients that we all have, they've got this data, they're capturing this data, they're using this data for something, and yet the customer population out there still believes that we that businesses are paying less attention to the feedback. So again, sort of mobilizing the information that we have, the tools that we have, you need to paint a picture above and beyond big data. So we've talked about big data, we've talked about the ways that we can capture it and all of these new trends coming down the pipeline, but sometimes you do need to slow down a little bit and, and really take a look and paint a story 
and capture that information using the same technology. I mean, we all have our iPhones and we have our, our, have our droids, and you can certainly hold your phone up and capture things on an experience. You can walk through the store with your client. You can walk through the store on your own. But capturing what the customer sees is a very, very critical part of taking the data that we're already getting and painting a nice, deeper picture. Um, and, and really, the, 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 at the end of the day, we have to leverage that technology to continue to provide better feedback. So that's, that's, uh, uh, that's us. That's what we do. And, um, you know, we really need to continue to engage our clients, engage our brands, and, and use these technologies to stop a little bit, slow down, and not just looking at, look at the qual and the quant, but look at the experience that the customer sees. Thank you very much, Kimberly. Mm -hmm. uh, some great videos and the clips there. Um, any questions for Kimberly at all? So when you, when you use video in that environment, mm -hmm. do you have to let people know you're videoing, or can you, under the guise of mystery, uh, get away with not advising them that you're videoing? There are two-party states and there are single-party states. Um, Obviously, single-party states, as long as I'm recording, it doesn't matter. In two-party states, you typically would have to have, you, you do have to have employee consent. Um, there's also the reasonable expectation of privacy when somebody goes into retail, when somebody goes up to an ATM, when somebody walks into a bank. Everywhere people go, people are being recorded anyway. So there, there's, um, there is two-party state notification where you have to notify the, the, the staff and they have to sign off at some point that they may be recorded. Sorry. Actually, there's the same questions. Okay. Uh, but um, does the stores, what, what is the, the, the government um, restrictions, but what about the stores themselves? Do they have any uh, issues with it? Did you ever face any problem, somebody recording something in the, in the stores? They're typically, I mean, the, the stores, the brands are coming to us wanting to, to capture the experience. We have a little more difficulties if a client wants us to go into co competitor where there hasn't been a release sign, then, then, then we can't do that. Any particular Indian cuisine? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pollock paneer. So, uh, yeah, I, I, sog paneer. Sog paneer, I like my uh, northern Indian, so... Thanks.